This is an older Diamondback Podium carbon fiber road frame. I got this one from a local retailer and I got it cheap because it's got a crack in the seat tube right at the clamp. I think most people would tell me to throw it away, but I'm a little bit stubborn and I think we can fix it. So in today's video, we are going to try and mend this and put this bike back on the road. Keep it out of the landfill. If that interests you, let's get started. All right. Here's a better look at that crack. It starts at the relief for the seat clamp and it runs down along the edge of the top tube. I suspect that this was caused by somebody using a seat post that was too small and really running the clamp down. If you look closely, there's actually a second crack it goes in the opposite direction. The inside of the seat tube, it's really not in good shape, especially where that crack is. The seat tube there is thin and you can see that some of the carbon is flaked out. Looking at the inside of that seat tube, it's in such bad shape that I don't think, even if I were to add new carbon and reinforce the area, that repairing this would last very long. I think the stress of putting a new post in there and clamping it down would eventually crack it again. So instead of trying to rebuild this, use it as a seat post again, I'm gonna do something a little bit different I am going to reinforce the area and I'm going to convert it over to a seat mast. Right now we've got our frame and we've got the crack right here at the seat tube. My plan is to take a new carbon tube, insert it in just like I would have done with a seat post, get it in there as far as I can get it and bond that into the seat tube with epoxy. So what that'll do is it will give me a tube that's then reinforcing the entire inside of the seat tube and reinforcing the crack. That is 27.2 millimeters. I want the new seat mask to match the outer diameter of the seat tube that's there now. So I am gonna get a piece of carbon tubing and I'm gonna slide it over this and sleeve it. And I'll bond that carbon sleeve to the tube with the same epoxy. I'll then come back and I'll add a carbon fiber reinforcement here, almost like a cast. And I'll cover the relief and that crack or that seam between the two tubes completely with that carbon. I started this repair by sanding off all the paint on the outside and running a drill brush down through the center of the seat tube. This cleans it up, it gets it ready for the epoxy and the new carbon fiber to stick. I have a few spare carbon seat posts in my bin I picked the one that fit inside the seat tube the best, and then I cut the head off of it so I was left with just a carbon tube. I am using some 27 by 30 millimeter carbon tube to sleeve the repair and match the OD of the seat tube. It's not exactly the same dimensions as the seat tube, but it's close enough. I sanded down both tubes and I bonded them together with some two to one epoxy. My seat mast topper showed up today. This one is a Ritchie WCS seat mast topper. This one has a 30.2 millimeter ID. The carbon tube I'm using for the mast is 30.1. So I think it's gonna be perfect, especially once I get a little carbon grease in here. So I need to figure out now what height my saddle should sit at. I measured my other bikes, and you would think that measurement would be consistent, but it's really all over the place. I found that the bikes that have a more upright seating position also seem to have a higher saddle height. So I went back and I remeasured just the bikes that are similar, similar riding position. And I found that I need 26 and 3 8 inches from the center of the bottom bracket to the center of the seat rails. So this measures right now 27 and 3 8. It needs to be 26 and 3 8. So I am going to remove the seat mast and I'm going to cut one inch off of it using the wet tile saw. I wanna make sure that the seat height on this frame is correct. So before I bonded the new carbon tube into the frame, I put the bike together temporarily so I could sit on it and check the seat height. Fortunately, I've got the saddle height correct, so I'm gonna bond the new carbon tube into the frame. I am using the same two to one epoxy that I used to bond the tubes together. I wanna to make sure that there are no air bubbles in this bond. So I started by coating the inside of the seat tube with epoxy. 
I then coated the new carbon tube with epoxy and I pushed the two together. As I inserted the tube, I rotated it to help work out the air. I let that epoxy cure for about 48 hours. Then I mixed up some hard set filler and I filled in that original relief. I let that cure and then I sanded the filler to shape. The original seat tube was slightly larger than that 30 millimeter tube I bonded in place. So to contour the two together and to reinforce the repair, I wrapped five layers of carbon fiber. I then covered that with heat shrink tape, shrunk it down and I let it set for 24 hours. The carbon repair looks really good, but I want it to be nice and smooth. So I used some sandpaper and sanded it so that it blended the two tubes together. There were some low spots in the carbon fiber. So I mixed up another coat of hard set filler and I filled those in. To finish off the new seat mask, I primed it with some 2K primer. I sanded that and then I gave it a coat of red base coat. I let that dry for a few days and then I used a Scotch-Brite pad and scuffed the entire frame. It's windy outside so I made a makeshift paint booth and then I used some 2K clear coat and I re-cleared the entire frame. I just finished applying the clear coat to the frame and it turned out really nice. So I'm gonna let this clear coat cure for a full week. This stuff is pretty soft and it takes a while to fully cure. It's hot in my shop, so I think a full week is about what it'll need. This is 2.8 Newton meters. Out of curiosity to see how strong that bonded carbon tube was, I took the piece I cut off. I used an old clamp I've got and right. I torqued the bolt to see where it failed. This is four. Okay, 5.1. I hear some cracking. Yep, that's where it failed, 5.1 Newton meters. So that was at 5.1 Newton meters, that's where it failed and it just pinched. I think it's because there was so little engagement here on the clamp, but it looks like the bond between the two layers held up really well. It didn't separate at that bond. It actually broke the carbon first. Interesting. Because that carbon tube didn't perform particularly well in my crush test, I decided I wanted to reinforce it a little bit more. So I used an expander plug this is the same plug you would put in a carbon steerer on the fork. I am using a Ritchie seat mask topper. It's got a 30.2 millimeter ID and it fits over that 30 millimeter tube I use for the repair perfectly. Here's the final repair. I think it looks really nice. I think it looks like it came from the factory this way. If my paint color match had been a little bit better, I don't think anybody would know that this originally had a seat post and that the seat tube had cracked. You'll see throughout the video, I've got the bike in my park stand. It's not actually clamped. I've got the clamp down to keep it from falling out, but it's in here really loosely. There's about three millimeters of space between the clamp and the top tube. There is no clamping force here. This is just holding the bike so it doesn't fall out. So if we see comments down below from people lecturing me about clamping carbon frames in a stand, we'll know they didn't watch this part of the video. I've only put about 100 miles on this bike since I did the seat tube repair. You can tell because the handlebars aren't yet wrapped. I left the wrapping off in case I have trouble with the electronic shifting. This way I've got access to the electronics. The repair itself, it turned out great. Riding around, I can't tell anything was done. If you've got a carbon fiber bike like this, one that has cracked around the seat post clamp, this repair really wasn't hard to do and I think it's gonna last the life of the bike. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, I almost forgot. So in the next video, I'm gonna put together a carbon road bike with a one by drivetrain and electronic shifting. It's gonna turn out great. It'll weigh less than 16 pounds. Okay, I'm gonna put together this bike. So if you're interested in seeing this bike come together, keep an eye out. That video should be out in a couple of weeks. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.